opening with this percussive score makes us POTA super fans feel right at home. Don't lie, you're a POTA super fan just like me. Pierre Boulle also wrote The Bridge Over the River Kwai. In other words, this guy wrote stuff your dad likes, or grandpa for you youngins. Solid fake out, fun way to let us know we're still in human land. Pericles, stop. I mean it, a no treat. Ah, <sighs> they really are like us. There was a time before the complete adoption of photoreal CGI where you could never be sure if you were looking at CG or a miniature, and there's something very comforting about that. In other words, I'm old and have poor eyesight. ka li -ma? Well, these gene splice chromosome enhanced. State-of-the-art monkey, you can handle it. There's some smart chimp shadowing. I'm getting every electronic communication from Earth, from all time. The storm must be bouncing it back to us. For those wondering why there's a clip of Hitler there, watch the short Jodie Foster film Contact. They explain it, and it's also a great movie, a great short movie. He's the canary, that's the coal mine. Your monkey launches at 1600. The insistence of the humans calling Pericles a monkey is such a perfect setup for the hatred the apes have for humans. Chimps are not monkeys. Easy way to tell, no tail. Never send a monkey to do a man's job. There is a level of camp in this movie that fits so cleanly with the Monkey World premise. I kind of appreciate that Burton rules out Earth quick like this. Let's us know we don't know where this movie is going. Probably too early for a Mark Wahlberg's workout routine, but you never know if you're gonna get the good, so we'll take what we can get. Whistler. Someone in the comments, please make this work with Blade's timeline. Leo is pretty macho in this movie, but he still doesn't need to see what's chasing them to know it's time to scram. I'd personally be leading the pack, but he gets there. Maybe isn't supposed to be hilarious, but if you're undecided, throwing a child into a burlap sack isn't the way to make me not laugh. <laughs> but still, the apes are scary. Maybe the scariest iterations. Except Koba, I guess. <laughs> Dang, you <laughs> molly -whopped him, which is a phrase I definitely used before watching Mutant Mayhem. <laughs> They nail how the apes run. Obviously, it's based on how apes actually run, but it is unnerving. They're so fast, and it looks almost unnatural, probably because it's actually humans, but it works. And it's the most Burton thing about this Tim Burton movie. The shrieking, too. That is also very unnerving. But the jumping is unnerving. Also, the quantities. Unnerving. Tim Roth, Blonsky, you in there? These prosthetics and this makeup are still untouchable. Take your stinking hands off me, you damn dirty human! Hey, expectations of version callback. Ape hookah jamming out with the buds? I don't know, it kind of looks like a good time so far. I must be out of my mind, out of my mind. I'll have to make it up on volume. On the rewatch, Paul Giamatti's performance is the first thing I really loved. It's so over the top campy. Supposedly, Giamatti modeled his performance after W.C. Fields, but there's also some Rip Taylor in there as well. Yeah. <laughs> nice. This one looked at me. Hey, he didn't look at Thade this time. Humans can learn. Be sure you get rid of it by puberty. The one thing you don't want in your house is a human teenager. Uh, where's the lie? Truly a piece of culture and social interaction we're missing as humans. They can be taught to live with us as equals, and I can improve it. Not much for visual hints of pumpkin inside Thade, but no amount of makeup can hide Marla Singer's crazy. Honestly, it works because Tim Roth becomes an entirely new being while Paul Giamatti and Helena Bonham Carter shine through as their ape selves. Flirting? Is it, is it flirting? It started when he threatened her. Maybe she's got a thing. Vibin? Let's let's call it Vibin. How the hell did these monkeys get like this? Best line of the film? Probably. Anytime Wahlberg asks a question about the premise of your movie with that inflection, you know things are looking up. We used to lose ourselves for days in the rainforest when we were young. Now I can barely climb a tree. Uh, relatable? I think. Yeah, that's relatable. The youth part, not the rainforest, but it's awesome that even a sophisticated orangutan would long for the days that he could act more like his ancestors. These humans carry terrible diseases. This is true, we've got some rough ones. And some smart humans actually got rid of a lot of diseases, but some other humans insist on bringing them back. Can't explain it. The government tried that once, and all we got for it was a welfare state that nearly bankrupted us. I think the city has about as much diversity as I can handle. Wowzers, one-two punch of classism and racism in a few seconds. Classic civilized society. <laughs> Bow your heads! Ha! And religious fanatics. Even got the idiot trophy wife, true believer, and the cynic politician who plays along but doesn't really buy into any of it. But it's also solid groundwork for how seriously Atar takes their religion, which comes in handy later. Nice reminder that not only are the apes in charge, but obviously they've got the strength advantage in ways we can't even imagine. You feel so much for these humans, yet you feel nothing for me. Honestly, Thade feeling like he's owed love and affection from his crush and then running away is pretty dang human. 
I know he gets the drop on them and he's got glaives, but it still speaks to Thade's ferociousness that he kills two gorillas and walks away untouched. Ingenuity. Those jackets, those are some street toughs. I don't want to give this a win. In fact, this win isn't for the scene. The win is for whoever insisted this scene had to be in the movie. It's the duck boobs in Howard the Duck. Why? Because you know they fought for the scene on No Sleep for 11 Days. That's why. And look at him go. He can still climb. Still a great shot and reveal that he's hanging upside down. That's why I used it for the teaser last week. Why did you help me? Why would you take that chance? Perhaps she felt the vibrations? Can you show me a way out of here? I promise you, I'll show you something that will change the world forever. Straight up Dirk Diggler energy. <laughs> Self-sacrifice. Your father was a brave man. What do you know about my father? <laughs> the fact that it's supposed to be somber but actually is funny father? makes it feel more realistic because it do be like that sometimes. Talking monkeys can't exist. <laughs> <clears throat> monkeys are further down the evolutionary ladder. Just above human. Marky Mark had it coming, and honestly, Kroll could have just killed him. Probably everyone else here. He just wants the humans to throw a little respect on his name. R species. But actually, family, hominidae, which Leo is also a part of. Hmm. Okay, well, I guess that makes sense. Still unclear why Ari freaked out to the same level when Dana just turned around. Apes are afraid of the water. They can't swim. We drown. That's why every day we pray for rain. <laughs> the sass. Wait, pray to Simos? How long can a human hold his breath underwater? Speaking of species, the answer depends on whether you're a member of the Tom Cruise de suborder. <laughs> uh. I have contact. Jesus, they're already here. Great setup. Only those who caught the old captain in the Mayday message might have an inkling about where this is going. Again, a nice reminder of how physically outmatched the humans are. Limbo is basically the ape equivalent of a fainting couch, and he's still wrecking house. This background is metal, which is funny because their entire community seems to be built in trees. Another amazing set design touch. Declare martial law. Give me absolute power. Eh, seems fair. One kidnapping, martial law. Humans are much more developed. We just do nothing when our kids are killed. Yeah, that's pretty dark for this campy movie. I apologize for nothing. <laughs> now is not the time to be timid. Burton and Roth clearly made a decision about Thade's temperament that really brings the character to life. And it's more than just that he's aggressive and irritable. It feels perfectly in line with how an ape culture would progress. They're similar to us in a lot of ways, but the intimidation and dominance displays are still part of how they communicate, even outside an actual confrontation in a diplomatic discussion like this. We are not just soldiers. We are friends. I am depending on you. Although somewhat ironically, along with the extra aggression, the apes seem to be a little more in touch with their feelings. We're friends feels like I love you like a brother in human expression. He may be a genocidal authoritarian, but Fade gets extra style points for how he mounts his horse. It's never not dope. Outside of the actual amazing ape design, the costume design is also always killer. I don't understand. He seemed to possess such intelligence. Yeah, we're pretty smart. <laughs> I like that he said we. For 2001, this movie predicted our actual future way more than Star Trek ever did. People from advanced human civilizations are much more like Marky Mark with an iPhone than Geordie LaForge with a Leah Brahms hologram. More will come looking for him. How can you possibly know? Well, you see, son, a long time ago, there were these telepaths living underground, and actually, let's save that for another time. But that question posed to Charlton Heston, OG Taylor, is the perfect level of meta. What you hold in your hand is the proof of their power. Their power of invention, their power of technology. Against this, our strength means nothing. <laughs> of course, Heston is getting all poetic about guns. Damn them. Damn them all to hell. Two callback expectations of versions in one movie? I'll take it. Seems we'll return. Of course, most educated apes consider such religious notions as fairy tales. I doubt if there ever really was. I guess you could say she's an ape theist. I know, I know, thank you. I'm here all week. Also, of all the things that made it in from the original, the creepy scarecrows weren't ones I was expecting, but I'll take it. There's always been something so natural about the way he takes his helmet off. I can just imagine with a lesser makeup department that little move would rip parts of his face and head off, but he does it frantically and fiercely, and it all feels so real. Just the amount they can all move their heads and necks is astounding, considering it took Batman a few movies to figure that out. Even in their holy art, Simos is inside an oval like one of the Oberon's pods. Wow, things really got out of hand quickly. Atar was right, this camp is not prepared. I will personally make sure this camp is prepared. Oh, but he, he didn't, uh, oh well. I like the idea that some of the humans on the Oberon were highlight enthusiasts and the apes were like fireball chuckers. <laughs> All right, so maybe the aggression is more than just a cultural choice. It seems pretty evolutionary. <laughs> But another A plus mount. Probably prod you and poke you and throw you in a cage too. <laughs>
you protect me. So it's clear now that she's been flirting with him all along, and look, if it were me and there was an ape that was clearly very intelligent, different than the other apes, like from a whole other world, and that ape looked like the leader of the Funky Bunch, I could see this happening. Ooh hoo hoo, the fake out with the spikes that could be Lady Lib's crown. And they planned it, they're there on the bottom of the ship. Is there some Hamlet in this movie? Ah. Alas, poor Deke Slayton? See, that was this commander guy. He played Deke in Apollo 13, and I, I just can't. I, you just can't. You can't hold a skull and have me not say something about it. The reveal that it's the Oberon is great. The reveal of what Kalima is is hilarious. I love that we see the sign earlier, and you could technically figure it out. It would be a stretch. Maybe less than V'ger, not as much as safe hold, but still. <laughs> Intimidation. More like a puppy than a tar, but it, it'll have to do. Anytime the lookout sees a marching line of torches in the distance, it's gonna creep me out, just watching death come straight at you. It's over, there's no help coming. You came. Yeah, some real Dirk Diggler energy in this one, but that's actually pretty moving. You love a hero who doesn't know he's a hero. <sighs> Did Tim Roth get an Oscar for this performance? Or like the ape equivalent? It's like a, it's like a Coco? David Greybeard, maybe? No, a Harambe, that's the one. So you want to be human? Then wear their mask! Wow, turn down his dream girl to commit mass slaughter. That is not very badass bad guy of him, to be honest. Still impressive. I respect your courage, but my advice to you is to put that away and head for the mountains. Kroll is a real one, looking out for the kids, human or not. We can win this. It's been done before. On my planet. Like, Thermopylae? Yeah, that works. You know you can't defeat they Tom. Might be able to surprise and confuse them. Ha, <laughs> sick callback. You know what? When you frustrate them, they lose focus. They get confused, even violent. The scale of this film is actually insanely impressive. That's a crap ton of ape extras in makeup and armor. And just some top tier filmmaking in here. Nope, I quit. Ape house servant sounds tight. What, what do I what do I got to deal with? A couple of chimps checking down my throat to see if I have a soul? <laughs> come on, come on. What, 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 are we, what are we doing here? I hate to say Leo told you so, but... What the crap, Burn? We established last week that the only way to be happy is to listen to me. Wait. Oh, snap, it worked. That's awesomely horrific. Holy crap, that's so many bodies. Oof, that got grim. With that weapon, would you not defeat them? I'm tired of this human. Again, I'm not gonna tell you that Thade's decision was smart. Half the time he'd be dead. But in this case, fortune favors the brave. Oh, crap. Wait, wasn't that the FTX slogan? Don't buy crypto, especially not if a celeb tells you to. And also just maybe never, unless you have a bunch of disposable income. So unnerving. Just like the idea of defending against an enemy that is not at swinging height? No thanks. Bro's got the tightest mounts in the game, and now he's showing off with the slickest dismounts on the planet. There it is. You know, there was a time in this country when you could trust an action movie to have at least one neck snap. Cancel culture media post much as much as ancient football groupers. They ruin everything. Look, all the apes are scary, but imagine a smart, upright mountain gorilla in armor coming for you. You're getting mollywopped. Wilhelm Macaque scream. <laughs> I, I tried. Wilhelm Marmoset scream. Will Howler Monkey Scream. That one's all right. Wait, that was Tibble. Will Human Scream. Saving a third of your love triangle. But I do love that Ari doesn't even think. She just takes off when she sees that Dana's in trouble. Man, there are gorillas, and then there are Michael Clark Duncan gorillas. They really pulled us into like Kroll, only to just kill him, huh? Early 2000s were a rough time for liking characters. Dang, leave it to Burton to make sure we get the full skull-crushing by mortal enemy experience with this POV shot. Let's go explain evolution to the monkeys. Look, Marky Mark is a weird cast for this role, but who else is gonna hit that line like a pro? No one, that's who. Saving the other third of your love triangle. I'm starting to think that Thade just might be an amateur gymnast in his free time. Heck no, you hit the little man, you die. He dies, right? Help me! My friend. Seriously, Roth is scooping up the scenery and funneling it down his gullet. Look at this intensity before he fires the gun. I won't help you anymore. Sucks that you killed your mentor over this unverifiable belief system. Maybe you think on that a bit. Haha, <laughs> that was your sowing, this is your reaping. Still just a scared little monkey. Do I feel bad for this dude? No, no I don't. Opportunism. Oh. Eh. Love triangle complete. I mean, it's pretty funny that he just pieces out. He never said he was there to save anyone. He's always just been trying to get home. Character consistency. This was such a fun moment because we all knew the twist from the original and with the music pounding in, we're all stoked to see what's coming. 
I'm starting to think you shouldn't be flying these things, Monk D. Ha, I finally get that. It's like one less than Monk E. Weird he didn't make himself Monk F, but then we're not all that surprised. Abraham Lincoln, touche Burton, touche. Such a stupid twist and I loved every bit of it and I still do. How'd he get there? Who cares? And like centuries before Leo, shut up. I mean like in his lifetime, which 40 years is generous for a chimp, but let's say they've evolved to our longevity and can live to like 90. But Thade was already middle-aged and he looks middle-aged in the monument. So in like, what, 30 years, he emancipated and IQ boosted all apes, genocided the humans, and became president, worthy of a statue. Dude, is it go get her? Got that rise and grind hustle. I bet it was the round offs. All right, keep your hands up. <laughs> it's such a Twilight Zone ending. Arguably more dire than the OG. And as much as the OG is untouchable in an existential way, after everything Leo just went through, to land back home and see this perfect tragic ending, the details don't really matter. I want everyone to know that my writer and I disagreed on a lot about this movie, and so, in fairness, I'll be giving you both sides of our argument, just without any of his opinions, since they're all wrong. Anyway, I did a little tenant math, and even though the timeline stuff always sort of felt like, yeah, sure, whatever, you go forward, you go backward, you stay still, it's timey-wimey twime. But when you plot out the course of events, it actually follows a consistent and, dare I say, logical path? So from our perspective, Pericles goes through the storm first, then Leo, then seemingly much later, the Oberon. The order of landing on the other side of the storm is the the opposite, Obron, Leo, and then Pericles. The only way this makes sense is if time is moving in opposite directions on either side of the electromagnetic storm, which is kind of a cool idea. Just for ease of explanation, Leo left our side and a few days later, Pericles landed on Ashlar. They were minutes apart on our side, but on the other side, it was a few days. So it stands to reason that even if the Oberon took a few days, weeks, or years, thousands of years passed on the Ashlar side, just moving in the opposite direction. The same logic would apply to Thade and Leo. It's impossible to say how long it would have taken ape scientists to fix up Leo's sunken pod, but once the tech is there, it's not unreasonable to assume they'd be able to do it. We know Thade knows it's there. Thade figures out the old gun pretty quickly, but whatever the amount of time, he clearly arrived long before Leo did and conquered Earth. The wonkiest part is what kind of time dilation is happening in the storm to make the gaps vary so much, but chronologically, it works. All that to say, if your biggest problem with the movie was the ending, it was at the very least well thought out and not just done for the wow factor. But look, I was 16 when this movie came out, and therefore it sits very comfortably in my nostalgia as a glorious apes movie, and that's said as an OG fanatic. I talk about objectivity in movie analysis sometimes, and a huge blind spot for it can be the nostalgia factor. Emotions are always there, but when a movie occupies a part of your memory that sits right next to, like, your first serious relationship, having an undefeated season of high school soccer, or that time between childhood and adulthood where summers didn't feel like an entire year, but you also weren't hyper aware of how short three months actually is, what does this have to do with Planet of the Apes? Absolutely nothing. Stop pretending like you watch my videos for anything but my poignant and profound anthropological commentary. No, the point is that no amount of objective point listing can ever change what chemicals are released in my brain when I see Thade's eyes open in the credits with that score. You can eventually replace those feelings if you watch something enough, but fortunately, I'm not there yet with this movie. What I love about this film is that it's a big swing. A big swing and a big miss? Eh, maybe. But honestly, I'd rather watch a movie that fails big than a movie that bores me by taking no chances. Do we focus on ape society a little too much? No, Ruben was wrong about that. Ape dentures are hilarious, get it together. The costumes and makeup were incredible. I know I'm old, but 2001 doesn't seem that long ago, but that was 23 years ago, and the apes looked next level. Even with Ari's being the weakest, it looked like her design was primarily based on the OG Poda look, so it still works. But Tim Roth, Michael Clark Duncan, and Kerry Hideyuki Tagawa look unrecognizable in the best way. They became those characters. The facial movements and emotiveness are still top tier. Tim Roth clearly stands out. He's intelligent but scary. He really captured the ape qualities of his character. His walk, how he held things, his reactions, he genuinely seemed like a talking chimp. He swings big and it totally works. He walked so Circus could run. That's a big, that's a big statement. I stand by it. A sequel might have fixed a lot of issues, but alas, that ain't happening. But the reason why is good because the reboots are dope and I can't wait to do them all before Kingdom comes out in the spring. Still glad I got to revisit this one. Next week, actually I'm, I'm not sure yet, either this one or this one.